What if loved ones were dying, with no cure in sight? What if the problem spread, and the entire community was destroyed? And though time and the elements wash away the physical scars, what if a hundred years later, something else remains? Parashaney, Michigan. A location steeped in legend. Shrouded in myth. And resonating with the echoes of the past. The stories go back for decades. Over the years, there have been different circumstances and incidents. Everything from voices in the woodline, children laughing, children crying, people screaming, electrical disturbances, including cars not starting. Photographs being taken and not developing properly. I don't know what it is. I can definitely hear it though. There have even been stories of a witch's ghost and strange sightings on the railroad tracks. John Bonk grew up near Parashaney and has had some pretty strange experiences of his own. This is the site of one of the first experiences I ever had in Parashaney. This is the train track that runs all the way through. This side you've got the graveyard, and on this side you've got the town site. And we were out here, standing on the intersection, and we saw a man all dressed in black walking down the tracks. Just down the tracks about 50 feet. Now, he kept walking at an extremely slow pace, and he got to about this distance when I called out of, Hey you, what are you doing? He looked up at us. And when he looked up, it was nothing but a silhouette. There was no face, there was nothing in between, no clothes, it was complete black. He took another three steps, turned to his right, and walked out the train tracks. And right when he got to this foliage right here, he disappeared completely. The once great town of Parashini, Michigan, has been abandoned for nearly a century. Very little remains after plague and fire erased the potential state capital from the map. The big problem with finding these things without knowing where you're looking is that it's been gone for so long and everything's just grown over it. However, its fascinating history, as well as its local legends, 
remain well known to the locals of the neighboring town of Ross Common. In the early uh, 1900s, when the lumber people were going on, Pierce and Roscommon were, were both lumber towns. Roscommon was considered more of a rougher town, and families would actually take the train into Pierce and and then stagecoach out to, to Higgins Lake for vacation and do other things. It was a town that was going to be the capital of the state at one time. Instead of being in Lansing, originally Pierce was going to be the capital of the state. And actually, it was a real booming town. A lot of money was made. And there was a woman, and I, I can't recall her name right now, but she was a woman that lived in Pear Shaney. And uh, they had a plague that went through Pear Shaney, like a fever, and it was blamed on her. They thought she was a witch, and they ridiculed her and subsequently she died. And I believe she died from the plague. But there's a train tracks that run through Pear Shaney that were used for logging purposes. And it's been told by all the kids, and it's very well known here, that her ghost patrols the railroad tracks. And if you go out there at night, when it's a real dark night, you can see her with her lantern walking down the railroad tracks. Now, this, is a, this has been around this story for many, many years. And the young kids, my, my children included, when they became teenagers, the kids would go out to Pier Shaney. And the, a lot of them would make bonfires, and a lot of them would just go and sit by the railroad tracks to see the witch of Pier Shaney. And many, many of them claim to have actually seen her. She has never caused any harm to anyone. She just is a lost soul that was misunderstood, but her legend goes on. Uh, in fact, Pierre was growing at a faster rate than Roscommon at one time, and then uh, there seemed to be uh, a plague that hit overnight, and uh, a lot of the children died unexpectedly, and the town just kind of crumbled. It, it would turn into a ghost town and into uh, to, to a history legend after that. And our biggest secret was always the secret of Parashani, the secret of the cemetery, the secret of the witch. And this was always something that we used to hide or, or hold like a very scary reference, you know. When I, was a, when I was in school and I was a kid, they used to talk about the ghost town. And when we'd go out there, that's basically what it was. A few tombstones. Um, a cemetery, really no buildings, just very little evidence that there was even buildings there, even back when I was a kid. You know. Were there any foundations at all? Uh, you'd see a few, a few areas that looked like foundations were in, you know, mm -hmm. some rock or some stone, some brick, <clears throat> but um, nothing that you could tell what size the buildings were or anything. And basically, we went to see the cemetery mm -hmm. because we knew the cemetery was there and, the, and, and it looked like very old. And the, and, and the kids nowadays in high school, now, now it's, become, um, oh, it's become an area where kids go out there and now they make bonfires and they'll do hot dogs and, and uh, you know, food, marshmallows and things. And they like to drink and they like to have their Love-ins and all that, but they still look for the Witch of Pear Shaney. Once you roll up there, like at the entrance, uh, some gatekeeper, like some old, old, really old woman, he comes up to your door, your, your window on your car, and knocks on your window and just kind of disappears. Um, and the kids seem to want to keep a legend alive that they've heard for several years of, of it being haunted or, or um, spirits are going around. So in, what they do is they go out there and they have parties and unbeknowing to them, other cars go out there and, and follow behind and scare them for the, <laughs> to keep the legend alive. Heard stories about the witch's stone, about people going out of the cemetery and dying. I've heard cars stalling on the tracks, the ghost train that goes through around midnight. When I was in high school, my friend told me that uh, 
her and her friends went out on the railroad tracks at midnight and you could see this train come in and once you go by it at midnight like you your car stopped immediately and you couldn't get it going and the train would come through and like go through your car and then right after the train went through you could start your car back up and go what? she said it was like it, yeah she the said it was just like yeah it just goes like through your car she said it was just the craziest thing yeah um, i wouldn't go when I was like, what was it? What, what the last time you were out there? Do you remember what shape the graveyard was in? Bad. Really? I mean, even back then, yeah. I mean, there was, there was. Um, you could see where people had pulled out some of the headstones, knocked mm -hmm. them over. So it's broken. It's, hasn't really changed too much throughout the years. Just that's probably worse. how it is now. It's probably just a little worse. A few more pulled out. Few more broken. Yeah, there's quite a few but, you know, more than when I was back. If there. nobody's there to repair that mm -hmm. and put it back, it's going to do nothing but deteriorate. The history is always going to be told around here. I mean, it's just something that has always been told. I've been here 20 years and I heard about it when I first got here and I still hear about it from the teenagers, you know, generation after generation. But they're tearing it up too much. And there's not going to be nothing there, you know. The, yeah, they can tell the stories about it, but the headstones are getting destroyed so bad that it's not going to be anything there. Somebody needs to do something about it. Johnny and I, along with our crew, researched the area. We explored the cemetery and the land where the town had once stood. to find out for ourselves the truth of what is really out there. We spent a night surrounded by the Parashini woods, engulfed in darkness and the unknown. This wasn't Johnny's first night here in the darkness of Parashini. He had spent many teenage nights here, and never had he not seen or heard something strange that he couldn't explain. He knew that this night would be no different, and assured everyone they would all experience some strange phenomena as well. Such guys, you guys saw the light then? Okay, first first light that was spotted was by Eric. Um, it was quickly dismissed as he moved around a little bit. I was able to realize that it was actually just a hole in the trees. Mm -hmm. I saw the same thing oh. over here when the light was gone. Ben said he had a similar experience. But... What is really out in Parashini? Are these just stories that have grown from the remnants of a town long gone? Or is it something real? Something frightening? What did we find out there? To find out, you'll need to see Echoes of the Past, Parashani, in its entirety. For more information, go to www.onemandownproductions.com.